threat that has come from Hamas terror group is of another terror strike and they've called it Tufan Al-Aqsa. Now, the reason it's called Al-Aqsa is referring to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is in Jerusalem. It's a World Heritage Site. Jerusalem, remember, known as from where Christianity, Judaism, Islam has uh, the initial start as history, as they mentioned. So it's actually the birth, in many ways, of three religions. But Al-Aqsa Mosque has become, in many ways, disputed site too, both for the Muslims and for the Jews. Here's why Al-Aqsa Mosque is called one of the most sensitive locations and sites in this Israel-Palestine conflict. Al-Aqsa Mosque is situated on a hill known to Jews as Har Habayt or the Temple Mount and Al-Haram Al-Sharif or the Noble Sanctuary to the Muslims. This hill and the mosque on it is at the center of dispute for both the Israelis and the Palestinians. Israel commands access to the grounds and security forces regularly perform patrols and conduct searches within the precinct. The mosque is administered by the Jerusalem Waqf under the Waqf Ministry of Jordan. Al-Aqsa is the name of the silver-domed mosque inside the 35-acre compound of this hill, sacred to both the Jews and the Muslims. The mosque is the third holy shrine for Muslims after Mecca and Medina. Given its sacred significance, there was a great concern about the precinct's fate after Israel's victory in 1967 Arab-Israeli war and the subsequent annexation of East Jerusalem. In August 1969, an Australian Christian named Dennis Michael Rohan attempted to burn down the Al-Aqsa, destroying the historically significant and intricately carved minbar or the pulpit of Saladin, a treasured piece of Islamic art. In 1996, when a new tunnel was opened near the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, Palestinians saw it as a violation of their sacred site. This led to even clashes that resulted in over 80 deaths in just three days. On 28 September 2000, Israeli opposition leader Ariel Sharon and a delegation guarded by hundreds of Israeli riot police entered into the precinct. This sparked protests and a violent crackdown by Israeli authorities with multiple casualties. Many Muslims worldwide considered this a desecration of the sacred mosque and the event helped ignite the second intifada of Palestinian uprising. In 2005, certain religious leaders in Israel advocated that Jewish people should not walk in a special place inside the mosque. They aimed to refrain from entering into the holiest section, which they believed to be the place where God lives on earth. Other Jewish religious factions wanted more rights to visit this place with the aspiration of possibly controlling it. They aspired to reconstruct an old temple that once stood there, sparking considerable controversy and debate. In 2014, tensions reached a critical point in the autumn, following an assault on Yehuda Glick, a right-wing rabbi. Israeli officials took the step of closing access to the Al-Aqsa. This was an unprecedented move since 1967. In March and April of the same year, Israeli police deployed tear gas and stun grenades against Palestinians within Al-Aqsa, resulting in international condemnation. This provoked Palestinian protests and quickly turned into violent clashes, marking the beginning of the second Palestinian uprising, also known as the Al-Aqsa Intifada. In May 2021, clashes at the site played a role in triggering a 10-day war with Gaza. On 20th May 2021, a ceasefire was announced. Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights reported the death of 256 Palestinians and 13 more of Israel, Thai and Indian origin in the 10-day war. In the first week of April 2023, there were sudden attacks on Palestinians praying at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. On 17th September, Israeli settlers went into the mosque area to pray. At the same time, security forces attacked Palestinians trying to enter into the mosque through one of the main entrances named Baba Silsila. All these on and off skirmishes around the Al-Aqsa and the Holy Mount has made it the most sensitive place in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Bureau Report, India Today. Let's also remember that Gaza is currently is where people are suffering. There are children, women and areas that are being targeted. There are also residential as it looks like and people are scrambling for food, fuel and shelter. There are air, air raids by uh, Israel, as they're calling it, the retaliatory strikes. They are preparing for a ground invasion possibly too. 
We have a reporter in Gaza right now, and this is what Palestine's Gaza Strip is looking like for now. Take a look. Wrecked. Tall blocks flattened. The ruins of what was a giant structure in Gaza not long ago. As you see, not only the mosque was totally damaged, but other nearby very, very close home to this mosque has been partially damaged because of the Israeli strike on the mosque and the neighborhood in general. This one of the closest homes to the mosque that was partially damaged by the raid on the mosque. Two million residents running out of food, fuel, electricity and water in the under siege Gaza Strip. Many lost their homes, their dear ones, to incessant bombings by Israeli warplanes. Many others trying to find a safe shelter in UN school buildings as ground attacks by Israeli forces look imminent. This is a four-story building, the four-story building of one of the neighbors of Ibrahim. That this destruction of such a building has uh, affected Ibrahim's apartment just nearby. And this is one actually of the uh, let me say hundreds maybe hundreds of buildings residential homes that have been destroyed either completely or partially by the Israeli war planes over the past six days of intensive sporadic Israeli air strikes on the Gaza Strip India today reporting from inside Gaza where a massive humanitarian crisis has unfolded amidst fierce Israeli retaliation to Hamas's Saturday incursions. This is what remains of a bombed building from inside. The death toll in Gaza rose to 1,200 early Thursday. According to the UN, the number of people displaced by the Israeli airstrikes has soared to 3,39,000. India today bringing you comprehensive coverage of the Israel-Hamas war from both sides. The latest developments and the human cost of the conflict. With Rami Al-Megari from Gaza, Bureau Report, India Today.